Hello and welcome back to the final video in the introductory series to June 3. If you haven't seen all of the episodes in this series, you can check them out on the playlist link on screen now. And to conclude this series, we're going to take a look at the arpeggiators and the settings menu. We will be starting with the arpeggiators first, and for those wanting to see the settings specifically, you can use the timestamps in the description. So looking at the UI, we can see ARP1 and ARP2 here in the middle window, and we can select them just by clicking them, and they are both identical. You can see there's no changes because we haven't set anything up. And to activate these ARPs, we can just click these buttons in the corresponding area on the right. The arpeggiators go a little bit beyond what we're going to explain in here, but we are just going to look over the main features, and then in the future videos, we will be taking a look at more advanced arpeggiated programming within June 3. With ARP1 selected here, I've already set up a little bit of a sound going and we're going to demonstrate these features. So let's take a look at first the step sequencer. So we do have two types. We have a MIDI and a step sequencer and we're going to look at the step sequencer first. So these come with a variety of patterns and you can also load your own MIDI file into there as well. If you've already created it in your door and exported it, you can load it into here. So you can expand the capability a little bit of June 3. Below here we can see a grid of edit, note, velocity and tie and then a series of numbers across the top. So these are our steps of steps 1 to 8, steps 9 to 16 and so on. Each page will show you the steps here at the bottom, 1 to 8, and if we click 9 to 16 we're going to see 9 to 16. So we can see that we are on different pages. Note corresponds to the note that's actually going to be played. So if we were hitting C for example, it's just going to play C. But if we were to choose this one and choose plus 12, because these work in semitone increments, we're going to have our C one octave above and then back down to the C that we're currently pressing. Moving down to velocity, so this does exactly what you would think. It goes from 0 to 127 on the value scale, and this is set to whatever you want it to be set to. So for example, you can see that the amp level is set to zero here, so we shouldn't be able to hear anything. But because I've already preset this in the mod matrix, we can now see that the ARP value velocity is set here, so ARP1 velocity. And then we set this to amount to a 43, and you can see it's set to the amp level. And it's also set here as well to the filter cutoff. So for now, I'll remove this. So we're just working with this one and I'll remove the mod wheel as well so you can just see this one source. So we've set it to 43, it's not going to open up the level to 100% but we can go back into the arpeggiator and we can now set the first note to zero, so zero velocity should equal zero volume. So now we can create a little bit more of a complex sequence by having velocity sensitive step sequencing. Let's just try this, two loud notes here and a quiet one here. And it adds a lot of depth into your step sequencing. And before we move on, that is not just limited to the amp level. We can connect this to any parameter that it will allow us to, to control that with the velocity levels. So that could be a filter, could be volume, it could be the amount of an effect, say the amount of phaser, and that will apply more dry wet signal to the louder and less to the quieter notes. And don't forget we can do the new drag and drop as well. And finally we have tie. Now this ties two notes together and we can create a slide or we can create a rest in our sequence. I'm just going to initialize this so we've returned everything back to 100 and if I click tie on this first one And we can create a rest by using note and dragging as far down as it will go till you see three dashes. Which is the same as turning the velocity down to zero so you can't hear it. Octave is just going to tell the sequencer how many octaves to play that sequence over. So one is going to sound like this. And two is going to sound like this. And so on right up to four. And that's just holding three notes on the keyboard. Steps is where we can increase the amount of steps that we have. So at the moment it's default to eight. So just this first page, but we can extend all the way to 32 just by sliding upwards here. Next, we have sync and rate. These are both linked together. So if we have this on, we're going to have set musical intervals, the usuals that you will see. 
And if we turn this off, we will see that we have it as a control in Hertz. Length is the length of our sequenced notes. So if we go into the negative values, we're going to get shorter notes. And if we go into the positive values, we're going to get longer notes. Swing is going to add a little bit of swing to the rate that we have currently set. So 16ths are going to sound like this. Just add a little bit more humanization and character into the sound. And finally, slide is tied in with our tie feature, as we mentioned earlier. So if we set a tie on the first note, we can create a slide by increasing the amount of milliseconds that we have. When we increase the slide now, when we play our sequence with this tie note, we're not actually going to hear anything happen. All the way up to a thousand milliseconds, we're not hearing anything happen. And that's because there's no note changes up here. So if we now bring this back down, apply a couple of note changes, we can then hear the slides between these notes. So I'm going to recreate this sequence just using the keyboard pressing C. So at the moment it's just playing that rhythm, but I'm holding three keys down here and I'm going to recreate that sequence and it's all it is is the up sequence here so we're going to go up two semitones and then three semitones and that will recreate the first portion let's get rid of the tie you can hear now our sequence is there and I'm just going to repeat that and there we are we have our sequence so now if we hit the tie we can hear a little bit of a slide between those two notes and we can increase that slide amount. And then there's just a minimal amount of slide when that slide is off because you're tying the notes together in general with the tie function. And that is the arpeggiator. Before we move on to the next section, let's just take a look at the MIDI section just so you can see how to load your files in. I'm going to click load MIDI file. And I'm going to pick one from one of my banks and I'm just going to pick this one. And now we can see the MIDI file is loaded in. I can just choose the mode and choose playback. And then when we hit one key on the keyboard, it'll play the entire MIDI sequence. And that is how easy it is to get MIDI files into June 3. Now moving on to settings, and here we can see a plethora of options that are global to the entire synth. And the first section is velocity, and now we can set the velocity value globally for volume, pan, filter and envelope amount. So to give you an idea, I'm just going to turn these two arpeggiators off on these two voices, and I'm just going to return it down to 1. Now the velocity volume here set to 100% on the volume is going to give us velocity sensitivity in our notes. So if I hit the key gently, we can hardly hear anything. But if I hit it harder, we get 100% velocity globally. That applies to the pan as well. So if we give it a positive value, the harder we hit this note, it's going to go further to the right. From the left, to the right and then we can reverse that by going to the negative values and then it will go from the right to the left same with the filter and that is the same for the filter and the envelope amount so you might want to control the filter cutoff level or you might want to control the amp envelope amount And that's the same with the filter position. And these are all controlled by the velocity curve here. Now you can see that I've set this to minus 60 and we can simply edit this just by clicking and we can go into the positive value of the curve or the negative value. And that's going to give you quieter notes that ramp up slower and then the louder notes get really loud really quickly. So there's less sort of velocity sensitivity in this area. Whereas if we did it this way, these softer key presses are going to actually be quite loud. So if I set the velocity amount here, I'm pressing that key really gently. 
and I can't get it to go any quieter. But if I bring this down to a negative value, you can hardly hear the key presses until I start hitting harder. So that's velocity curve. Next up, we have the pitch bend options and we have two semitones up and two semitones down as standard. So when we hit the pitch wheel, it will only move two semitones either way. And you can set this up to how you want 64 either direction if you wanted to. And you can set this up how you want, of course. So we could just bring that up so we have a range of 64 notes going upwards. And the same for down, we can have a value of 64 going down as well. Next is the plug-in keyboard. So you can see this is defaulted to C2 and C6. This is just referring to this keyboard here. We have middle C here. We can change this to how we want. We could drag this up and say it actually starts on C4 at this point. So it's just depending on the sound design. You can just shift your keyboard around when you are clicking and hearing what sounds you're creating. Next we have modulation rate, so we can see if we click here we have a normal, fast, very fast and audio rate sections. Now this does not equal better sounds the higher you go. This is based on the performance of Dune 3 depending on the tasks at hand. And then finally we have modulation rate and sync. So sync can be changed from internal to host. It is set to internal by default, but it gives you those options for advanced programming. And modulation rate here, we can choose between four settings, which is normal, fast, very fast, and audio rate. So don't confuse these with better sound. These are not gonna increase the sound quality. These are actually improving the accuracy of Dune 3. For example, if you choose fast or very fast over the normal setting, this is going to improve modulation with using rapid LFO settings or MSEGs that are performing very fast. It's gonna give more accurate results. An audio rate, in a nutshell, is going to use more CPU, but it's going to use the entire synth engine to process sample by sample, which means it's going to be extremely accurate over the other settings. So that's more for advanced sound design and for people that are going to be pushing Dune 3 to the limits. That option is there for you guys. And that concludes the introductory series to Dune 3 with me, Demis Helen. We've just taken a look at the arpeggiator sequences and how to set them up using the buttons over here and set them up across multiple voices. And then we've looked over the settings and how to change things globally in Dune 3. If you did enjoy the series or you haven't seen all of the series, let me know down in the comments. And also you can check out the full series in the description if you didn't see the link earlier to the full playlist of Dune 3 introductory videos. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.